Oops. I will, uh, uh, I'm going to switch you over. Ah, uh, here we go. Hello everybody and welcome to the second in our Lunch and Learn webinar series. My name's Ilona, I'm the co-founder and director of business development consultancy called Elevate Greater Manchester. We have been so lucky um, since we launched um, five months ago to have been working very closely with Bruntwood Works. They're a fantastic company that I'm sure most of you on here are already familiar with. And one of the things that you may have seen over the last few months, um, depending on whether you're a current customer or not a customer yet, um, is their Bruntwood Spark programme. And this programme was very much around ways that they could continue to support Bruntwood Works customers during the pandemic. So whilst people couldn't always be physically in the buildings, they were very aware that there was more they could do to offer support and actually to utilise the skills and experience of the customers to share with other people who would benefit. We've been delighted to be able to input into that programme and also to have benefited from it. One of the key pieces of work that we've also done has been funded by Business Growth Hub and Bayes, um, and we work as Bruntwood Works is delivery partner on it, and that is our peer networks program. So that brings together groups of leaders of SMEs in Greater Manchester to discuss various issues that they're facing and things that are, are on their minds as we look ahead to hopefully reopening in the not too distant future and starting to work out what that new normal looks like. And that is where this series of, of six webinars has come from, has been the themes that have come out of those conversations where we felt that the bringing in some expert advice um, would really help. So hopefully some of you saw last week's webinar that was all around getting to net zero. Um, we had Phil Corbell on from the Carbon Literacy Trust. So do pop on to Bruntwood Works' YouTube channel and have a watch of that if you haven't done already. And today, the focus is all about the future of the workplace. So who better placed to be able to answer those questions than Bruntwood Works themselves? Aww. Not only are they the providers of a lot of that workplace, um, but obviously have a huge employee base themselves. So they have an internal team to look after, as well as all of you lovely people who are on the call today. So I'm delighted to be joined um, by Heather Gray, a familiar face to many um, as their Aww. business development manager. So if I just hand over to you now, Heather, to do, do a fuller introduction for us, and then we can get cracking talking about the future of the workplace. Sure thing. Hi, everybody. Oh, it's so lovely to see you all. And uh, thank you so much as well for uh, spending your lunch hour with us. So as Elena said, my name is Heather Gray. I look after the business development for Bruntwood Works. So for those of you who don't know us, we we are a property developer who really brings together office and work life to create some truly incredible spaces. So we're all about building beautiful um, buildings and filling them with inspiring customers and looking at doing everything we can um, by taking kind of full ownership of that whole process to make sure that we're you know creating some incredible communities within our spaces which also feeds out to the wider business community and indeed the, the, the cities that we operate in. So we're very proud to be a northern business. Um, the majority of our spaces are across Manchester and Greater Manchester. However, we have some truly incredible sites over in Liverpool, Birmingham and Leeds as well. Uh, more of those are to come as well. So it's going to be a really exciting few months for us. Wonderful. And it's so nice to hear that optimism. And one of the things that I've seen Bruntwood Works doing on social media recently is highlighting some of those different workplaces. And as somebody who used to love being able to get out to those places, actually still been able to see what's going on in different cities and that those projects have been really exciting. And I'm looking forward to finding out about them in a little bit more detail. Where I thought it made sense to start was to go back to what feels like an absolute lifetime ago, but is only actually a couple of years ago. And future of the workplace is something that we're all talking about now because mm -hmm. it's very obvious there have been some, some massive changes and, and no one's expecting to kind of quite go back to normal. But one of the things that I've always loved about Broadwood Works is you were talking about this stuff kind of before it was cool. Um, <laughs> 
started to spot some of those trends coming into Bruntwood Works buildings, there was already a very different feel and, and focus to a lot of those. So could you tell us a little bit about the Pioneer programme and the kind of values and customer trends that that was based on? Definitely. So we've always been really inspired by the hospitality model in general. So, you know, really taking away a lot of the corporate feel and making sure that people truly felt at home when they came into one of our spaces, that they felt looked after, um, you know, and indeed in any of our sites that you go into, the first first welcome that you'll have is from one of our hosts, um, you know, rather than it being a traditional reception desk. Um, because I think for us, it's all about blending that different type of space together and creating that atmosphere. So we launched, well, we've been planning for a few years now, but we launched and completed the first of our pioneer scheme, pretty much the first week of lockdown. <laughs> so um, you can imagine we had, you know, it's a beautiful 1920s building. It's uh, called Blackfriars, just near Parsonage Gardens in Manchester. I can't wait for lockdown to be over and for us all to be able to see each other safely because I'm going to be doing about a million and one tours. So anybody who wants to see this afterwards, you know, please do let us know and I'll, I'll give you a show round. But you can imagine, you know, we had this big 1920s um, party planned and that, that got canned very quickly. Um, however, but, you know, what we decided to do was really use um, the Pioneer buildings as a chance to showcase what we thought the office of the future looked like. So it was drawing on those little experiences that we'd already had, like I said, leaning on the hospitality model, but also pulling in some factors from, you know, fitness and well-being um, as well. And tying those up with our retail spaces as well just so that it was a fully immersive experience um so Blackfriars was the first to be completed uh, back last April uh, we have just finished 111 Piccadilly so again right near Piccadilly station in Manchester and uh, coming up very soon so as of next month um we have Block which was previously Lowry House and has had a full rebrand so I've got some photos of those which I can show you whether you want me to show them now or a little bit later when we do the slides I'm going to make them wait a little bit longer for those photos Fair enough, completely. Um, only because there's, there's a couple of bits um, that I thought would just be kind of useful to draw out on that and mm -hmm. I think particularly because of um, hospitality is hard an incredibly difficult year I mean yeah. we all have to a degree but I think we can uh, we can agree that's probably hit hospitality hardest so I just thought it might be a nice opportunity for you to give a bit of a, a shout out to some of those kind of you know hospitality partners that we're seeing pop up in those spaces and and also just kind of give credit to those people in in hospitality that have made the move into kind of more corporate spaces and and the impact that that's had on the building yeah, completely. So we actually work with um, hospitality operators of every size, which is really exciting. So what we try and do when planning a building is really think about the placemaking around it. Um, so, for example, you've got sites like Hatch and sites like Athlex, which we very much use as an incubator space. So an opportunity to showcase lots of different types of, um, of food, of, of retail offering. So everything from, you know, really cool gyros and tacos right through to, you know, tapas and, and wine bars and things like that. Um, and we've had some absolutely, um, you know, brilliant work that's taken place there um, that's really lent to the Oxford Road corridor and the student experience and making sure that it isn't just a corridor anymore, it is a destination. And um, so there's been some incredible things that have been happening over there, but we've also as well been working with organisations like Bean, like Ditto, who we're really excited to be welcoming into um, Union just on Albert Square, which is actually where our head office is based at, uh, as well. So I can't wait to be getting my morning coffees from them, um, <laughs> which, will, which will be amazing. Um, but we've also been doing some really incredible work with all organisations like Mowgli, who, you know, they've uh, Nisha, who we work really closely with over there, has been opening up sites across Liverpool, um, started in Liverpool, moved over to Manchester, has actually two sites here. We've got um, the one over at the Corn Exchange, but ours is over at University Green. And 
again it's it's that it's that way that i think hospitality operators are now working with landlords and property partners to say you know it's not just about finding a vacant unit and trying to create an experience anymore it's about us working in partnership and saying what's the broader impact on that radius and how do we drive footfall there drive traffic there make it a really exciting experience and an exciting space um, so we have been really lucky to kind of be working with those visionaries to make that happen i love that and it's that phrase about the office becoming a destination again that i really like there was that i really want to believe it was intentionally bad but the the dental advert that we all saw that was you know the things that we supposedly oh. missed about the office and it was you know actually it was all the things we're really glad to have seen the back of but yeah when we've spoken to people what what they're looking forward to a lot of is that whole blended experience that you mentioned so being able to grab that morning cup of coffee you know pop out for lunch after work drinks all of those things that were kind of taken for granted a little bit in our working day and it's, it's wonderful to see um, a company like Broadwood Works that, that brings those different elements together so going into then the kind of we're not going to dwell on this because we'll have heard a lot about it already but you know we can't overlook the fact that you know we we did go into lockdown immediately after you opening Blackfriars house as a property company facing a pandemic not being able to do you know the immediate um things that you could do can you give us um, a bit of a sense as, as to what that was like and what were kind of the the guiding principles that enabled you to kind of get through to where we are now hopefully looking forward to opening in the not too distant future yeah of course so we did have originally that really strange in between period which to be honest i think we're going to start seeing again in the next few months um, as we start easing out of lockdown we had the ease in period that you can remember at, at the start so we worked really hard with the British Safety Council to make sure that all of our spaces were COVID secure um, because, you know, some essential meetings did still need to take place, um, you know, and I think our position was almost very much like, um, I think the only comparison that I've been able to make has been like the National Rail where, you know, we're an infrastructure, we're a business in ourselves, but we've got to keep running for everybody else to keep running as well and to keep doing what they need to do. So, like I say, we worked really hard with the uh, BSC to get the COVID secure um, accreditation and just really give everybody that confidence that if they did need to be in there, they would be in a safe and welcoming environment and that, that those concerns were the last things that they'd need to worry about in our spaces. Um, but, you know, after launching the space and letting everybody know it's here and safe for when you need it, we we then had to really think well how can we support our customers and what can we be doing aside from you know looking at, at rent, rental payments because obviously that's most businesses largest overhead you know we've always said we're a partner for you we're here for growth so how do we facilitate that when we can't do the usual things that you, you expect from us what we did have at our disposal was an incredible community of customers you know businesses that are you know, really ambitious, aspirational, and really knowledgeable. So how can we connect them so that all of the trials and difficulties that businesses are going through from, pan from the pandemic, you know, which in a lot of cases, businesses from every sector were facing the same sorts of challenges, you know, how can we connect them together? So what launched was um, our business support program, Spark, which obviously this is kind of a part of as well. Um, and we have literally looked at every avenue that we can virtually deliver content that might suit how somebody wants to engage with us. So that's been, you know, one-to-one -one advisory sessions where we've profiled our customers and connected them to people that might need what they know about. Um, we've done webinars. We We've done really interactive workshops where people can come away with solid action plans for their business um, peer learning groups which we've been delivering with yourself which has been fantastic um, you know and I think one of the main things that we had to think about was you know we're having these conversations about an organization's growth and challenges at the moment that's really good for us to know. It's good to, for us to understand where our customers are up to because then we can support and facilitate that. So, you know, we've been covering everything from leadership and change management, right, uh, you know, 
personal development topics, right through to you know business strategy and the nitty gritty bits of cash flow forecasting and HR and employment law and all of that sort of thing. So it's been a really wide range of topics. I don't think I've ever learned so much in such a short period of time. It has been incredible. And as you say, like we've, we've been able to be a part of that, but just looking at, at that sheer range and, and quality of content that's that's been coming out, it's, it's a real credit to yourself and, and the Spark team. Now, obviously I knew you pre Brumwood Works um, and you were very much known and, and still are known as, you know, a very avid network, very much kind of people first. and. For me, when you, you moved into Bruntwood Works and you were kind of on that journey to kind of learn a lot more about property and, and understand all the language of it, the bit that, that you never lost, and that's what I think has, has really kind of come back now, is you were always people first. When I chatted to you, it was about people. It was around businesses, and the property just happened to be the way that you were doing that, and I think that's definitely put you in a, in a great space to still be able to be a really valuable partner, even when they might not be physically in that space. Looking ahead then, so I know you've pulled together um, a few stats for us if you want to um, screen share those. So this is as yeah. we're kind of looking ahead. Um, and this is kind of, you know, if we had a crystal ball, wouldn't that be amazing? We could start saying, you know, this is when we'll reopen. This is what it will look like. You know, we're, we're not in that place. Sadly, I'm, I'm unconvinced anybody's at that place at the moment. Um, but obviously what you are able to share with us is some of the trends that have come off those conversations that you're having with customers and and where you're kind of planning to go as best we can. So I'll hand over to you to talk us through a few of those slides. Definitely. So what you can see um, right in front of you is our co-working lounge in Blackfriars House. So uh, as you can see from the fact that there's lots of people in it, this was taken pre-COVID um, and I can't wait until we're back uh, back to that. But one of uh, what we've been really making sure um, that, that we've been taking into account in the design of all of our spaces is that it's not just about work anymore. And I think that's something that people have really realized from the past few months. You know, coming into the office isn't just about coming in to get through your workload and your to do list. Um, you know, so much of your identity, so much of your lifestyle is tied up with that. Everything from your commute to how you spend time on your lunch break to, this, you know, the, the colleagues that you speak to and the partners that you work with. And so for us, that's really governed a lot of the design choices that we've made within our spaces. And we've tried to, um, you know, we've always tried to make beautiful spaces. That goes without saying. But we really try to look at what the trends are that genuinely make a difference to people's well-being so biophilia is a fancy word that's being banded about a lot in the design industry at the moment it just means pot plants everywhere <laughs> uh, you know really um, making sure that we're making lighting a priority things like ventilation again these sound like such boring such basic things things but it's all the elements within a space that you don't notice until it's wrong it's trying to get it right from the start and I think we have such a heightened sensory awareness and we will do coming out of the pandemic um, that it's even more important than ever to get that right so we've been looking at creating spaces that draw on the best of all of these things. It's about making um, our spaces sustainable, not just for the sake of it, not for the sake of greenwashing and ticking it because, you know, we think we should be seen to do that or because it's the right thing to do, which obviously is. Um, you know, it's making sure that that's incorporated into every decision that we make. Uh, it's making sure that the amenities on site are exciting. You know, you genuinely want to go and get your coffee from, um, you know, Anne Cope's Coffee, who are downstairs at 111 Piccadilly, because it's incredible and it's better than the instant stuff in your own office. But also, you know, you're supporting an incredible independent local business as well. And I think that's really part of the experience. Um, it's making sure that the technology is smart, not just for, for the users, but for us to be able to continually monitor and keep improving the spaces. And it's about making them, you know, inspiring. It's about putting up beautiful pieces of art and, you know, making it a space that you want to be in, because that's where you'll have the best creative thinking, um, you know, and, and you'll be in the best headspace for, for your business. So... Bruntwood Works Pioneer 
here, as I mentioned, is about pulling all of these things together. So you can see we've got the outside of Neo, the reef terrace, uh, which I've got, um, which I'm very excited to be returning to in the summer months. Um, and here is um, a quick snapshot. You can see the gem on uh, the left hand side. I'm just going to use this, um, which as you come down the Piccadilly approach, it's the first bit of the building that you see, you know, we've been really conscious of, of the fact that 111 Piccadilly is the first office that you see. It's your first experience when you come into Manchester by train. So how do we really set the scene and a level of grandeur in the space? Um, so we built this beautiful extension around the, the front, which you can use for co-working. It's a really relaxing, really chilled out space. And, plans for us to use it as a gallery to showcase you know some incredible artwork as well um we've got this we've got photovoltaics going up the whole building which are absolutely incredible you know and we've got a real level of customizability within that as well so you know every october we have the monsters that appear in manchester i absolutely love it i love scare season it's my favorite you know but being able to have um these photovoltaic lights, which create huge tentacles waving around the building. It's absolutely amazing, you know, that, that we can change the colours, that we can change the feel of it and change the skyline. And we've worked really hard with City of Trees as well, um, as well as some of our sustainability stakeholders, just to make sure that we're creating these urban oases uh, that are, you know, helping with local wildlife, local flora and fauna, and you know, just making our cities a better place. So this is the site that I mentioned before that you'll see and probably all look quite familiar to you. If you were to turn right, you'd just be heading into the Northern Quarter, head straight on and you're down to Market Street. And this is a, a quick snapshot of the hospitality model that I spoke about. So it's Ancoats Coffee. Um, we try to be super flexible with these spaces as well because, you know, I think the conversations that I'm having when I'm taking people around is that they want to be able to be doing different things. You know, they want to be able to run events and, you know, have meetings in these spaces, be able to bring their laptop and just crack on and do, you know, a little bit of work between those meetings. We need to create these real multifunctional environments. Um, so Ancoats Coffee are going to be um, our provider there. They've also got a liquor license so that in the evening, again, we could do champagne receptions and things like that, which again, I can't wait for. Um, and then just at the back over here, we've got um, more co-working as well as some really beautiful meeting spaces. So th this is the site that you'll see as you go a little bit further, further back. Very clean, very bright, very airy, um, just really light open spaces. They're really beautiful. And here's an example of one of the serviced offices as well that we've had refurbished recently. Again, it's about making sure that everybody's got that space. And I think one of the things, especially in the global um, pandemic that we've really noticed is that as a culture previously, we were quite used to being very close you know, it's quite a claustrophobic socialisation um, in the UK. It's when you compare it to somewhere like Sweden and Stockholm, where naturally you've got a little bit more space, people do give you a bit more room in the supermarkets and things like that. And I think when we think back to service spaces, you've got two ideas in your head. You've either got something like this, where you've got a little bit more of that movement, or you've got the glass fishbowl where everybody's crammed in and I think we've all been to visit those sorts of spaces before and I think coming out of this there will be a real you know there, there will still be social distances social distancing taking place but I think we've had a year of, of distancing you know we're going to be aware of when we are all crammed in together and um, so we've been really pleased that we've always put in more square footage per person. <laughs> it's, it's a decision that's always paid us off well. Uh, Block is the new site which is due to be developed in April. Uh, so again, this is a main focus around well-being um, and lifestyle. So we've got, again, beautiful open spaces. This is um, just behind Primark and on Market Street. We've taken back the NatWest building, which you might remember from Market 
street and in, and um, brought it into the space. So we've got a beautiful amphitheater downstairs. We've got fitness lounges. There's sleep pods in there. It's really thinking about how can we do things a little bit more differently. Uh, breakout spaces, beautiful kitchens that you feel at home in. And really excitingly, we're going to be working with Brewdog on an on-site hotel uh, and bar. So it's absolutely incredible. And we're just thrilled to be working with them in the fact that, you know, they are one of the most forward thinking uh, businesses in, in the, um, the food and drink space. And, you know, the fact that they've maintained that confidence that after pandemic, people are going to be wanting to go out. They are going to be wanting to visit new cities and visit old cities that they, they have loved and missed through this period as well. And Blackfriars House, uh, which I mentioned right at the start, light, airy, warm, welcoming, and really excitingly for summer, we'll have some beautiful rooftop space, again, where you can do yoga outside with incredible views, um, and also see a different uh, direction of Manchester skyline, because you often, you know, miss this. Something that is well worth noting, as I mentioned before, we have sites in Leeds, Liverpool and Birmingham as well. So the pioneer model about bringing together all of this incredible stuff um, is something that's taking place over there at the moment. And we've got some sites that will be launching this year. So places like the Plaza in Liverpool, uh, which would be absolutely beautiful. We've gone for a really lovely, very chic 60s feel to that. They've all got these really solid identities. And I guess it's about as well looking at the community in our spaces and third spaces. It's that, uh, I mean, I, I love the idea of the third space and it, I think in a lot of cases it's what we've used hospitality for and it's one of the key inspirations that we've brought into our model is it's that space where you don't live and it's the space that you don't work either. It's where you relax, it's where you catch up with friends, it's where you sit and think. Um, and I think it's really important for us to be designing our spaces with this kind of space in mind. Um, now, one of the things that I'm really keen to talk to you about is the trends that we have seen uh, through the pandemic and that we're starting to see and plan for on the other side as well. And, um, you know, I think right in the first lockdown if you think we've, we've had three now the first one was the office is dead and we saw it banded about all over the place and you know people were thinking well I'm at home now I can just crack on this is all fine you know and I think in a lot of cases we're very much in survival mode and you know we're thinking I can get through this it's okay and you know are we ever going to go back in the way that things were and as things have progressed you know, we are, I think most of us now are desperate to get back in some capacity. We won't return to the same place we were this time last year. And I think, you know, our predictions and the way that we've modeled our kind of financial budgets and everything going forward are very much that we foresee businesses coming back and using the space maybe three days a week, three, you know, so there'll be and every employee might be in three days rather than the five days. Some might decide to stagger that. Some might say everybody in Tuesday to Thursday, Monday and Friday can be home admin days or, or whatever. But, you know, we're foreseeing that three to five split. Now, what we've tried to be thinking about throughout this period is, well, how do we design our products and our services to kind of fit costings around that sort of utilisation? So, you know, we offer everything from, um, you know, meeting rooms and co-working space um, right through to your service space and your traditional lease. Um, but how do we make sure that the pricing kind of reflects the usage? So, for example, membership is one that I think will be a massive trend coming forward in that it's £95 a month and it allows you to work for three days in any of our co-working lounges. So if you've got a meeting in Manchester on Monday, um, then, you know, come in, use Block, use 111, use Blackfriars House. Uh, you might have a meeting in Liverpool on the Tuesday. Again, you can go there. Um, and, and use the space as and when your diary fits. But 
you know, when you are looking at staggering that, if you imagine 10 people, space for 10 people in a traditional lease sort of setting, you'd be looking at, you know, for £4,000 a month or around about that sort of model when you factored in all of your power, data, Wi-Fi and those sorts of things um, if you're at top spec. Whereas, you know, with something like the, the membership model, you can be doing that for 10 people for £1,000 a month. It's a lot more cost effective. And um, some people obviously need their own space and want their own space, but they might want the flexibility, which is where things like the service space model will work really well. You just bring your laptop in, you plug and play, everything is included in the costings and you pay per desk. So again, you might have, say, say a team of 10 again, um, where you go instead for, for an office space that's of, of five desks. And then you stagger it and just make sure that people are in on different days, dependent on you know their preferences. But you're paying for the space that you're using, which is maybe half of what you're budgeting for. Or you might say, I want the full space, but I only want to be in for a few days a week. So let's do something like the office share product where we will match you with another organization uh, that will be wanting to use the space the days that you're not and then you're sharing that rent so there's been absolutely tons of change and development in what people have needed and what people have wanted and the way that we've adapted our products but I think the key takeaways are that it's about flexibility and it's about making sure that we have options where people can pay for what they're needing and you know that they can utilize the communal spaces and have that flexibility for the rest of it. Um, for us, I think we're also going to be really looking at uh, blended workforces where some people are going to be working from home, others from the office. And I think for them, it's going to be a case of balancing space with technology, but also bringing in change leadership and change management tactics and looking at the way that you communicate with your staff and making sure that there's a real solid um, that there's guidance for management teams, that you know, you, you're thinking about things so that it's not an us and them mentality of who's based in the office and who isn't, and that you're kind of factoring those into any decisions that you're making that affect the culture. Because I think that's one of the biggest risks that organizations have coming out of lockdown. Oh, I can't hear you alone. I don't know as to whether that's. <laughs> um, <laughs> can you hear me OK? Yeah. Um, so one of the other things that's well worth mentioning is, as you can imagine, um, throughout the, the past nine months, we have had pretty much every query from customers that you can possibly imagine about returning safely. Um, you know, so all of the considerations around employers' responsibilities, legal obligations, those sorts of things around space planning. And so whether or not you're a Bruntwood Works customer, please do um, let us know if you've got any queries because we've got a fully dedicated health and safety team and legal teams, um, as well as our space planning teams who've probably been dealing with these sorts of queries all the time already. And we're really happy to be sharing that guidance. What we have done as well is collated everything that is the kind of the most common frequently asked questions about returning to the office and put them into this brochure. So again, I will um, send this over to Alona so that she can share this following the event. Um, but you're very welcome to review this. If it's not answered in there, please do come to us because we can totally help. Thanks ever so much, Heather. Can you hear me again now? I can, perfectly. Wonderful. Thanks ever so much. Uh, do you want to stop your screen share there? I will. And then...
we'll be able to play a little video in a moment. Um, so before we come on um, to the little video that we're going to show, just to kind of bring one of those spaces um, to life a little bit more. Uh, first, is just a reminder to everyone, if you do have any questions on anything that, that Heather's run through, feel free to drop those in the chat or as Heather says, to kind of get in touch for more information. But there was just so much there as to, I think it's easy because we don't see it, that you don't realise just how much has, has gone on behind the scenes and saying about kind of the way that those spaces work is that if it's all right, you don't think about it um, yeah. and actually getting all of that stuff right. You know, Katie and I have been lucky enough to be able to kind of go in and work in some of those spaces in between kind of various lockdowns. And one of the things that we've been so impressed with is that it's both safe and welcoming. You know, we felt absolutely, we knew where we could sit and where we couldn't. We knew the one way systems, what we could do and all the rest of it. But at the same time, felt genuinely warm, welcoming, coming in and yeah, just really appreciating having those other spaces. And I think in a time when we don't even have two spaces, that joy of thinking about a third space is, is just amazing to be able to kind of come back in and have those divisions where we want them and kind of, you know, some, some extra space around us for everything else. That flexible model um, is, is just incredible that, you know, in a very short space of time, you've been able to adapt to kind of what your customers are saying, you know, for a property company to be looking at things and actually thinking, we might only have this occupied three days out of five. And instead of kind of looking at that in absolute horror, you've kind of gone, right, well, how do we make that work? Have you got companies that are already approaching you about kind of going into things, you know, like this this office share model that if you know said, you know, like this is what we want? Is that something that we're we're seeing an appetite for despite not knowing when the start dates might be? Definitely. And also I think a lot of organizations are coming to us a little bit more open-minded in terms of how they want to use the space. So, you know, we haven't seen really that people have wanted less space. They've just wanted to use it in a very different way. You know, so previously, especially in kind of few more traditional leases, you might have planned in for big banks of desks and things like that. And now, you know, there's less of that and more about meeting space and, you know, collaboration space, because when people are in the office, that's what they're going to want to do. So we're definitely having those conversations conversations and yeah we you know I think in terms of there's a hesitance about committing uh to to things for a long period of time so it is very much more about the flexibility and um, um you know that even in our again our bigger traditional lease spaces we're seeing that um but it's about working together and having those conversations around things like you know growth and challenges and what they are so that we can anticipate them together and um, one of our, our our primary purposes has always been to be seen as a property partner it's not just a landlord and you know, so one of the, the, the USPs that I've always really been excited about ever since I've joined Broadwood has been the fact that when people do sign a contract with us, it's with us, it's not with the space. You know, if they outgrow that space, if they need something, you know, something bigger, something smaller, we can rip that contract up and move them to something that, that fits their needs better. Um, and I think that's something that's going to be key. It, people will be coming back, like I say, maybe a little bit more hesitantly. Let's put them in smaller space for the time being until they know exactly what they need and where they need it. And then let's grow with them and let's do that in a sensible and organic way. I love that. And that idea, and you mentioned it previously, it's been like that partner for growth uh, is really refreshing because I think, you know, that, that landlord-tenant relationship can be seen as, as quite acrimonious, that it can be, you know, it's, it's all about negotiating your lease terms and, and very kind of formal, you know, my background's in law and, and you would see a lot of fallings out over all of these <laughs> things. And it's so nice for, for companies, whether they're customers or yourselves, to be looking at that as being like, like, this is somebody who's going to be with us on that journey that you know whether it's you know a startup you know someone such as you know catering ourselves like dipping in and out of those spaces through to you know those kind of those those massive brands that you have and I've always been you know so impressed looking at you know those customer lists as you know 
just how good some of those customers are and we're going to touch on an event that, that brings a, a few of them to the fore shortly but it is that that full spectrum and I know one of the things that that some of your customers talk about is because you're so passionate about building that community whether that was physically within the building or online is that actually as a startup they have access into some of those much um, more well-known brands much more established companies but then equally there's some of those you know particularly some of the bigger tech companies that they quite love being in a space with these like small, agile, yeah. innovative companies. And it, it really does work as a community within those spaces. And yeah, I think that's, that's something pretty special that you've created there. And, you know, as a startup, that's, you know, definitely something that, that we've appreciated already. So again, you know, massive thanks to you in, in pulling that stuff together. In terms of that hesitancy um, in coming back, is there anything that you would kind of suggest people have a look at, things that they might want to think about that would kind of, you know, put their minds at ease? Is it about, you know, picking up the phone and, and having a conversation with you? Is it site visits? Are there things that we should kind of be looking at, particularly if we're in a position of not just thinking about, you know, me personally, what's kind of right for me going in that, but if I've got a team of people, I'm thinking... I know I want them back in the space. You know, we miss that collaboration. We want to get people in there, but we don't want to force them back in. Yeah. We want them to feel safe and comfortable and confident. There are the kind of things that, that they can be doing at this stage to prepare for that. Absolutely. I mean, I think the, the main thing that the organisations that are going to be on, you know, the front foot coming out of this have been doing is been maintaining that communication throughout, um, you know, throughout the lockdown period. We've had nine months of uncertainty and emotional, being quite emotionally fraught. And I think actually a lot of management teams are a lot closer probably now than they than they were, you know, at the start. And it's about having those open, honest conversations about what people feel comfortable with doing. But then it's also about sharing information about how you're managing the space as well. So something that we've been really proactive with is, um, you know, sharing what um, what new practices we've been putting into the place, what people can expect before they get in, because most of the time when you're in, you feel fine. But it's the it's the kind of the the work beforehand about going in so letting staff know that you've thought about most of the things that they're worried about you've asked them and you've taken those into consideration that you've answered them and also the fact that you've probably thought about things that they didn't even know that they were worried about but because you've covered it all they feel safe they feel secure and a good landlord should be able to work with you to pull that stuff together if they've not already delivered it themselves you know obviously we have the responsibility of that in all of the communal spaces and we can help um you know advise on what people need to be doing within their own suites as well brilliant that's really useful and they say so much of that comes down to just having those there's really open conversations that in a lot of ways the pandemic's been very humanizing that you know we've yeah. all got you know different fears we've got different concerns we've you know got this increased awareness of how important our health and well-being is so it's, it's great again to be able to to involve you in those conversations uh, Bruntwood um, has also been one of the um, founding partners of United City. Um, a lot of people um, who are on this from Manchester will have seen it, and I'm sure there'll be similar initiatives going on in other cities that surround rebuilding that, that confidence in reopening our city centres, getting people back in um, when it's safe to do so. So again, would would really recommend either following the work that United City are doing, or you know, we can signpost you to similar organisations um, in different cities. Um, I'll look and learn that we have coming up um, in March I think it's the one on the 10th of March but we'll double check is featuring a few people from United City and it, it really is about opening up so if you do have any kind of conversations that you're, you're trying to have questions that you want to raise like do flag them up uh, with us anyway and there's things that we can cover on those webinars as well because it is about you know we want people to be excited to come back not just feeling like it's it's something that they have to do. Mm -hmm. So whilst we're on that moment of excitement, I'm hopefully going to be able to now share my screen and show you um, a little video of the new block space. So it always does this always when my bar that I need to swap things goes on the wrong screen. So hopefully you'll be able to see and hear this.
Lovely. Just seeing those shots of looking over Manchester, they do really just remind me, you know, how much I miss. Oh, wait one second. Apologies for that. It auto played the next video. So you may not all have heard that, but it was certainly distracting to me. Um, <laughs> but it's just so lovely to see that that optimism and whether it's, it's talking about kind of your spaces as a whole or those partners like Brewdog that are coming in and, and really still committing to, you know, huge hospitality spends um, gives us that, that confidence um, that everything's going to at some point come back. I think it will be so lovely as well in that if you remember this time last year, we had more cranes in the sky than we've had in years. You know, I think we had the most in Manchester in that, that, than in the whole of the UK. It was insane. And construction's still been carrying on while people have been, you know, at home. And so coming into the city centre, when we do start getting that buzz back, I think we'll just see, be fantastic to see what's developed and what's been being built while we've been away from it. It will, and it's yeah, it's so encouraging. Um, one of um, the women that, that we both know is work, Lucy Noon Blake. I know she's working on on a number of, of restaurant openings over the year, and we're chomping at the bit to be there as a plus wait. one and get into those spaces. But it is just, it's we've missed that buzz, haven't we? That that sense of of community of of hearing what people are up to, and. That brings us on quite nicely to an event that I am genuinely so excited um, to be working on. It's something that I think we've been chatting about behind the scenes for, for a good few months now. There was conversations about whether we could do that live, whether we could do it online, how that was all going to happen. So those of you who are Bruntwood Works customers will be getting an email today, I believe, um, with some of the headlines on it. Um, and we'll open that event up for early access for Bruntwood Works customers. We'll then be opening out to partners um, and then going out generally. Can you give us a little bit of an overview of what to expect from the Spark Summit? Yes, I'm so excited about this. So. Obviously, 2020 and the start of this year has brought so many changes. And I think in a lot of ways, it's really accelerated um, people's working practices. And I think to bring together some of our most incredible customers and our biggest names to share all of the innovations that they've been working on behind the scenes will be it will just be incredible. So <laughs> the speaker lineup um, has been announced today, so I'm finally allowed to say, uh, but you'll be hearing from the likes of Brewdog, of Jaguar Land Rover, of PKI, of AO, uh, of Love Raw. We've got some truly incredible customers that are coming along to share their stories. And it, they're quite personal stories as well. Elona and I have been briefing these speakers on what we want them to talk about and it's the things that make them excited to do what they do you know it's not that traditional PR piece uh, you know that you read and that sounds all lovely and glossy it's getting to know these people as, as, as real humans as well as business leaders so that's going to be coming up on the 26th of March I think one of the most of March. 20, yeah, 25th of March. And I think one of the most exciting things about it is that, you know, there are so many events at the moment. And so we've had to really think about how do we make it special and how do we make it different and how do we give that same feeling that you get when you go to the brilliant events like TEDx. Um, that take place every year you know it's that it's that inspiration it's that ability to look up and um, you know out of your day-to-day -to -day tunnel vision and I think it's going to be really special. It is. I'm, yeah, so excited. I mean, incredible speaker lineup, an incredible host in Heather, of course, which will be wonderful. And I'd not really kind of, we decided that we would talk a bit about Spark Summit because of, of the timing of it being launched now and obviously um, having with Heather with us today. But whilst we gave these speakers themes and it was around sustainability, innovation and community, actually, I think if we'd given them all the theme future of the workplace, a lot of those similar themes would have come out that we mm. wanted to to make sure that whilst you know there's no point pretending we haven't been through a difficult year because we absolutely have but we wanted it to feel optimistic and we wanted it to feel inspiring and it's been so wonderful having those conversations with customers for, from all different sectors different sizes 
that they're all changing the way that they work, the way that they're building their companies to be like, well, actually, like we had our principles in place. We knew what our guiding values were. This is how we've been able to cope with the pandemic. And this is now what we're super excited about for 2021. So it, it is wonderful to hear, you know, the commitment of, you know, those those huge companies like, you know, Brewdog and AO to, you know, how they're going to continue to grow and, and work with people across the Northwest, that there's job creation in there, but then also kind of your smaller companies like say like Love Roar of how they've been able to build that up and, and capitalize on, on some of those trends. So it's all set to be um, a very exciting event. So if you do have any questions, um, pop them in the chat. Um, not seeing anything come through. So what I'd kind of like to know from a more personal level then, Heather, is mm -hmm. you, you have got access to, let's face it, some of the best spaces um, across the North. So taking your eye off the Manchester ones, because I know they're the ones that you've, you've actually been able to get into a little bit more recently. Where are the top spaces that like, once you're allowed back out and traveling, where are you most excited about getting back into? Oh, I mean, I can't wait to go to the plaza in Liverpool and see what done with the space there um it's actually as well we um you and i both know uh, scott from inside as well who are based literally next door to next door to us at the plaza so i think that whole area is having a real reno renovation and rejuvenation throughout this period and i can't wait to go there and also the space is just incredible we were able to take a trip um last year at the start of last year uh, to London to look at some really inspiring spaces that informed a lot of the design elements and it just looks really cool and really different so I can't wait to go over to Liverpool and also you know some of those there's tr some truly incredible food and drink operators over there uh, you know pe people like Mare um, are doing great work over there so yeah can't wait that sounds to me like an invite for us to have a, a little trip over to Liverpool, back in the spaces, some nice food and drink and uh, yeah, get into that inside hotel and, and have a little trip. So count us in for that. <laughs> Thank you ever so much to everyone um, who's joined us today and, and to those of you who are watching this back. We appreciate that, you know, life is nothing if not chaotic at the moment. There is an enormous amount going on. So really appreciate um, you giving up your time to join us. I really hope what you've, you've learned today has been useful. It's certainly been eye opening to me, even having worked quite closely with Brontwood Works over the last kind of few months and, and previous to that as well to see just how much work has been going on behind the scenes and the level of flexibility that's there and I know that that's been echoed obviously in in lots of different kind of companies that you know we've had to make those changes and it's the brands that are putting the customer you know front and center that that really seem to be flying and, and we'll get that support so that's all from us today I hope you will join us next week we'll be back at one o'clock on Wednesday we'll be joined by Mel Hill who is a digital marketing freelancer and she's going to be talking about building an online brand a lot of what we have at the moment is our online presence so it is something that that more than ever we need to be making sure we're, we're investing time and, and energy in and making sure that what people see of us online is the brand that we want to be portraying so thanks once again to you Heather for joining us for sharing those oh, thank you for having me into those buildings and hopefully we will see everybody out and about um in manchester liverpool birmingham all of your different cities and areas in the not too distant future thank you thank you